My name is Nicole King, and I'm the Director of Broker and Community Relations at Healthcare Partners Nevada. Our team typically hosts and attends in-person events to connect with our Southern Nevada community and share the exciting things we're doing as an organization to care for our patients. Although we're not currently able to connect with you in person, we're thrilled to have launched virtual events to connect with you from the comfort of your own home. We appreciate you joining us today to learn about fall prevention from our Sun City, My Generation Senior Clinic nurse practitioner, Kim Tatum. Before I turn it over to Kim, I'd like to introduce Saba, who has joined us today to share a bit about her role as a certified Humana sales agent. Saba? Hi, right, my name is Saba Hindea. I'm a Medicare specialist for Humana. I am a local advisor who can answer all your questions. Each year, Medicare enrollment period is between October 15th and December 7th. Please keep me in mind during that time as plans do change annually. Um, also, with the recent COVID-19 pandemic, CMS has implemented a special enrollment period from now until, until June 30th. So if you, friends or family, have been affected by this, please keep me in mind. My number's on the screen. Um, just give me a call. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you, Saba. We appreciate it. Um, Saba will be able will be available to answer any Medicare or insurance related questions at the end of the presentation during our Q and A. We will also display her contact information at the end um, in case you didn't jot it down right now. Um, so before I turn it over to Kim, I'd like to share a bit about the Healthcare Partners Nevada network. Healthcare Partners Nevada, an Intermountain healthcare company, is a network of nearly 300 primary care providers and more than 1,500 specialists. We have medical clinics and specialty care affiliates throughout Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, Henderson, Harump, Mesquite, and Boulder City. Healthcare Partners Nevada is committed to delivering the highest quality care to all of our patients. Through our coordinated care model, Healthcare Partners Nevada provides patient-centered comprehensive primary care, specialty care, and urgent care services. We're incredibly proud of our My Generation Senior Clinics that offer concierge-style primary care for our Medicare Advantage patients. In fact, we're opening up three new locations this summer and we'll be sharing more details at future events. We were founded in 1996. Healthcare Partners Nevada became a part of the Intermountain Healthcare System um, in June of 2019. Intermountain is an integrated health system with clinics, physician groups, hospitals, and telehealth services across the Intermountain West, primarily Utah, Southern Nevada, and Southern Idaho. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Kim. Very unflattering picture. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm, a, I'm Kim. I'm a nurse practitioner over at the MyGen Clinic in Sun City. i um, been here, oh gosh, about a year and a half now. Um, enjoying it very much, and I do enjoy doing these talk talks. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, falls and fall pre prevention um, because it's something that is very important. I remember as a nurse practitioner in school that it's something that we did a lot of research on. It's something that we talked about a lot um, because it can, as you see as we go along, it can cause a lot of issues um, and both for the patient's health and financially as well. So the objectives today are to see whether a person can be considered a risk for falls, um, how we assess those risks as a provider, um, what you should do if you do fall, and what you can do to try to prevent those falls. What's interesting, um, some of the facts about fall risk is that one in four American adults age 65 or older report falling each year. And I thought that was rather interesting. I didn't realize that it was that frequently. Um, I remember working in the emergency room as a nurse and quite often having patients come in who had fallen. Um, they broke arms, broke hips. Um, because of their falls, um, tripping quite often, or just having other types of injuries. Um, one in 10 people report a fall-related injury. That could be broken bones. Um, sometimes it can even be just as minor as like a skin tear, um, just a variety. In older adults, uh, falls account for about 60% of all injuries that relate to the emergency room visit. And that's probably why 
um, when I worked at an emergency room up in this area where we do have Sun City, that we were seeing a large amount of patients that actually had fallen and were injured that we had to treat. Um, over 50% of injury-related deaths annually are related to falls. So that's a pretty high number when you look at that. Many falls um, do not cause injuries, but about 20% do cause broken bones or head injuries. And one thing I was thinking about when I saw the head injury is what always concerns us is when a patient is on blood thinners or even aspirin. Um, if a patient falls and hits their ed heads, they are more apt to, um, they could have a brain bleed, so we need to CAT scan the head, make sure that they don't have any kind of a brain bleed. Um, and a lot of our seniors do have some type of Eliquis or um, Zerwalto or um, Flavix or something like that that they're taking. Um, so that is important to keep those things in mind um, when you're trying to prevent a fall risk. In 2015, falls medical costs surpassed $50 billion. And I was quite shocked because I thought that that was, I never would have thought that it would have been to that extent because that is really expensive. Am I at risk for falls? Most falls are caused by the interaction of multiple risk factors. So those we'll learn can be some that are from the environment. Some of those can be from things about our medical conditions. Um, they can be from other factors. But the more risk factors you might have, the greater your likelihood of falling. But wait, there's good news. Your healthcare provider helps to lower those by reducing or minimizing your risk factors. So once we take a look at what those risk factors are, we can look at how to modify those and how we assess those in your annual visit. So those that are intrinsic, these are your personal factors. So advanced age, things happen as we get older. Um, our vision may not be as clear. Our hearing may not be as clear. We may not have um, the muscle tone that we had. So the older that we get, the more apt we are to have a fall. If somebody's had a previous fall, I know I am probably the klutziest person in the world. I just, you know, tripped and fell the other day. And we have to be very careful about those things because um, a person can get really hurt. Muscle weakness, um, our muscles lose some of their elasticity as we get older. Eat and balance problems. Um, this is where the walkers and canes come in handy. Um, sometimes people may have equilibrium problems, so their balance isn't what it should be. Part of it is vision. Their vision changes as we get older, and it's necessary to go get those eye appointments with the eye doctor to make sure that we have the correct prescription in our lenses so that we can see well. And we also have to take into consideration that we may have um, patients with macular degeneration who lose the center vision, or even those that have cataracts that may also distort their vision. So those things will also make us more likely to fall. Um, postural hypertension, um, that is where the blood pressure drops. Quite often it's related to medications. Um, what will happen is the patient will be sitting and all of a sudden they stand up and they start feeling dizzy and they may feel like they're going to pass out or they may actually pass out and injure themselves. And quite often you'll see that um, certain medications will do that, um, especially blood pressure medicines. Chronic conditions like arthritis, strokes, um, incontinence, diabetes, Parkinson's, and dementia. Um, incontinence is a big one because sometimes people are just trying to run to get to the bathroom because they don't want to spoil themselves. And then they're not looking to see what's going on and they may slip and fall. And then there's also those that have the fear of falling. And so that makes them more wary 
about getting around. The extrinsic factors are those that are external to the actual person themselves. Um, sometimes the stairs won't have handrails that they can hold on to when they're going up or down the stairs. Or maybe there's poor stair design. Um, maybe the stairs are slick, slippery and they can't get a good grip on the stair. Or maybe they're too far apart or some other design that isn't going to work for the person. Um, lack of bathroom grab bars. My father, love him, um, came out to visit me this last October and went and put grab bars in my bathroom and my showers just to make sure that I was safe so that I would not slip and fall if I were home by myself. Um, dim lighting or glare, um, that's a big issue too because if the light isn't bright enough, you can't see what's in the environment that could possibly lead to your falling. Um, obstacles and tripping hazards, huge. Um, cords, making sure that cords are secured and out of the way. Um, making sure that rugs, um, those little area rugs, the rugs that you put on top of things, um, the mats going into the house, all of those prevent, can possibly be things that you may trip over. Um, slippery or uneven surfaces. Um, you out walking and you see the don't see that the sidewalk is uneven and you may trip over that. Or let's say it's raining outside and it's slick and you might slip on that. These psychoactive medications, um, those would be like um, Xanax, um, Valiums, medications like that um, because they can make a person also more prone to falls because it can make a person dizzy. Um, improper use of assistive devices. I've heard a number of times from patients where, oh, I just was wanting to go to the refrigerator, so they didn't take their walker to go over to the refrigerator, but left the walker somewhere else, and they walked over, and then they fell, unfortunately. So how do we support our patients? Um, healthcare Partners um, is very committed to identifying which patients may be at risk by performing an annual well-being assessment. Now, the well-being assessment is all geared towards fall prevention. It asks about balance, walking, um, exercise, if you've fallen, what led to your falling, do you use an assistive device, any vision or hearing problems. It asks about urinary incontinence. It asks about memory issues. So all of those things we take into account. And we're going to ask you that on your well-being assessment because we're invested in finding out whether there is a risk there and seeing if there's some way that we can assist you in lowering your risk. Um, we do do this during your annual wellness visit every year. And we give you a form with about 17 questions, and then your provider would go over that with you. Um, if we identify you as being at a risk for falls, our team will usually, we have a number of resources, and I've ordered these for patients as well. Um, we can have home physical therapy about, so they can come out to your home. They can do an evaluation, see how you're walking. Um, see if there's any exercises or things that they might do to help you. Um, there is silver sneakers, um, which is great. A number of the gyms in the area have that, and it is a benefit. Um, we have a program on our computers as providers called Creams, and we can print out information for you um, that you can take home and read. It's a really good resource. Um, over the counter benefits. And that's where you get your bath safety equipment. Um, you can ask at your clinic and they usually have a booklet and you can order things from there to um, be delivered to your home so you can use them. And then there's um, active RX as well. So what do you do if you fall? Um, whether you're at home or somewhere else, a sudden fall can be very startling and upsetting. And 
I know this from my own experiences. Um, and it is important to stay as calm as possible and to just take a few deep breaths, try to relax and assess your situation and how you're feeling. Um, the best thing too is just to stay where you are on the floor or ground for a few minutes. And then this will kind of help you get composed and get over the shock of falling. The second part is kind of, you wanna make sure that you're not hurt before you try to get up. You don't wanna to move too quickly or in the wrong way because you could hurt yourself worse. The other thing would be um, you can get up safely without help, then roll onto your side, get up slowly with your hands and knees, crawl over to a sturdy chair and get yourself up. As it says, put one foot on the floor and then turn your body and sit on the chair. Now, or if you're lucky and somebody's around, you can have them assist you up. Or if you can't get up, you think something is really wrong, um, you can call 911 and they can come and assist you. Um, this is why it's great to have the mobile phone um, as you're going about your house and about your day, keep it with you um, because you can call for assistance if you need it. And the other thing is there is these um, life alert that you can use as well um, in case you fall that you can just push the button and get a hold of somebody to assist you. And then the other thing would be to see your provider as soon as possible um, to make sure that you are not injured to see whether you need to have some x-rays or if you need any kind of further evaluation. How can I prevent falls? Um, although falls are quite common among the older adults as we saw with the statistics earlier, they can prevent it by targeting these modifiable which means we can change the risk factors. Um, one would be the vestibular disorders, which usually we would refer over to the ear, nose, and throat, and possibly for um, over to physical therapy for some balance therapy. The postural hypotension is where you get up too quick, um, your blood pressure drops, you start feeling dizzy. Um, a matter of getting up slowly, we may need to make medication adjustments so that does not happen. Vision impairment, it's important to keep your prescription up to date. Um, get your eyes checked to see if you have any kind of medical issues going on, like the macular degeneration or the cataracts I talked about. Foot problems, um, you may have some peripheral neuropathy where you have numbness and tingling in the feet, so you're not feeling things like you would normally. And then the adverse medication effects. Um, there is, well, for instance, Benadryl um, is listed as a medication that should not be given to people as they get older because it can make them more apt to fall. And there's actually a list of medications um, put out by Beers, B-E-E-R-S, and it has a list of medications that should not be prescribed to people as they get older because it does make them more apt to fall. Um, effective evidence-based interventions include physical therapy or an exercise program, which you could get either through a physical therapy or through going to silver sneakers, um, managing the postural hypertension, like I said, getting up slowly um, and also seeing if the doctor can adjust medications, referring to the eye doctor or podiatrist, which are benefits um, with the plan, and then medication review and management, which you know should be done in every doctor's visit. You really should get a review of your medication and make sure that you're still taking medication that is on your list. So 10 tips to reduce your falls. You're going to stay physically active. Um, test your vision and hearing by going and getting it tested. Uh, review the medication side effects. And that's pretty easy to do because when you go to the pharmacy and you pick up your medication, they usually have an insert in there that tells you what are the side effects of that particular medication. 
sleep. You want to make sure you get enough sleep. I know sometimes that's really hard um, and the person doesn't seem to quite get as much as you used to when, when you were younger. Um, alcohol, limiting the alcohol, because um, that can also be a cause for falling. Uh, stand up slowly so that you decrease the likelihood of having your blood pressure go low on you. Um, use the assistive device that has been ordered for you or get one if you need one. You can use a cane or a walker if necessary. Um, do strength and balance exercises. They are offered through a lot of the physical therapy areas that we send patients to. Wear the non-skid rubber soiled, uh, rubber sole, sorry, rubber soled shoes, and then talk with your doctor and see what they feel would be some ways for you to try to prevent your falls. Oh, I'm going to test your knowledge. Okay. In 2015, how much money did we spend on treating fall injuries? Either 10 or 50 billion. If I remember correctly, it was 50 billion. Yep. Okay, which of the following is an intrinsic factor? Um, advanced age or stair design or dim lighting or glare? Now the intrinsic has to do with what is going on with the actual person. It's a personal issue. So that would be the advanced age since the poor stair design and dim lighting are extrinsic factors. And then what can you do to reduce your risk of falling? Become less active or do strength and balance exercises? And I would think probably the second one, do strength and balance exercises because that's gonna help prevent muscle weakening. Thank you, and any questions? If anybody has any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat bubble. If not, we're going to go ahead and move on. Thank you all for attending.